Hey everyone, so it is due time for a favorites video. I wanted to share with you all the products that I've been particularly liking over the course of, I guess the last month, some longer, some shorter. I'm going to be giving you quick reviews as well as demos of all these items. So I hope that you enjoy it. And if you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Amanda. My focus on my channel is definitely makeup driven, but at the end of the day, no matter if it's like skincare or makeup, I really like to go for quality and for overall a formula to give me a very skin-like effect, something that just makes the skin look healthy. That's really my angle here. So if you align with that, I would love to have you back. Before we jump into makeup, I do want to talk about some skincare favorites and Youth to the People is kindly sponsoring this portion of the video. Like I was just saying, I need my skincare to just make the overall quality of my skin sing. I have tried out almost every single Youth to the People skincare item like at this point. My first favorite is going to be particularly great for those of you that struggle with puffiness under the eyes as well as darkness. And you to the people did recently come out with their peptides in C Energy Eye Concentrate. And this is the one product that I've been using for the longest. And I have personally found over the course of my skincare journey that eye cream, eye serums, it just takes a lot for me to take the extra step to use one. But I did just turn 30. I want to make sure that I am taking care of the fragile skin under our eyes. The skin under our eyes is the thinnest skin on our face. And I think it's important to take care of it. I've always struggled with the skin under my eyes. This product is essentially a gel serum hybrid. It has peptides, it has vitamin C, Plus, on top of that, it also has caffeine, which I really enjoy, especially in the morning. I have found that the peptides in here do a really good job of making the skin under my eyes feel bouncier, more resilient. Peptides are really great for that. I have found personally, the caffeine in here does a really good job of depuffing the under eye. And with continued use, the vitamin C in here will help to correct any sun damage that you might have under your eyes. Now, I don't have a ton under my eyes, which I'm lucky. This really offers kind of an immediate illuminating effect that I find makes this just a really perfect skincare product for under makeup specifically. I find that even if I don't wear makeup, my under eyes look more hydrated and radiant and just prettier. I have tried a lot of eye creams. Um, a lot of them feel kind of thick under my eyes. They don't necessarily do a good job of lying really closely under the eyes to not create extra hydration that might make your concealer crease even quicker. I've just found this formula to be very balanced. Again, it makes the skin feel bouncier. It offers this really pretty illuminated effect. I find that I'm not kind of getting the cracking and kind of dry skin around my eyes that I do typically get. It keeps the under eye looking depuffed. And in general, it's such a bouncy kind of plush formula that doesn't feel too heavy under the eyes, which you don't want an eye cream that's too heavy. That could potentially cause problems as well. So this eye concentrate has just been treating me really well. And again, like I said, concealer just glides on top of it. So that that makes me a happy camper. My second favorite product that I have tried from Youth to the People, and again, I've tried like pretty much everything, it's the Kombucha and AHA Power Exfoliant. So this is 7% lactic acid, and then it is 3% glycolic acid. It's an overnight peel product. I essentially use it like I would use a toner. It is not sticky on my skin, which I have found some um, exfoliating toners can be a little bit sticky. I have just had really, really good luck with this. You know, my skin is pretty sensitive when it comes to chemical exfoliants, so I always have to be careful. I was honestly even hesitant going in to try this item, but I am so, so glad that I did. I am just noticing an overall 
brightening effect to my skin and you know any post acne marks that I have just hyperpigmentation that I want to look a little bit brighter this is such a gentle way of me getting that brighter look without my skin <laughs> freaking out. Again, a lot of exfoliants do not go well with me, but I think because this is mostly lactic acid, lactic acid is especially great if you do have dry skin. I have found that my skin just looks brighter. There's kind of this little bit of refinement, especially that I've really been enjoying with this. And by the way, this also has black tea ferment in here which my skin notoriously really, really likes and gets along with. So overall, as far as an exfoliating toner that does not strip the skin and offers that brighter complexion, I have been so, so happy with this one. But those are my Use to the People favorites. I do have a discount code if you'd like to use it to make any purchases. So I will leave it right here and uh, down below for you all. Now, my next favorite is actually a fragrance favorite. And I've been blabbing about this a lot, but I'm going to continue to blab about it. It is the Kaoli Yum Pistachio Gelato fragrance. Now, I have had this for maybe a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I've already made a significant dent in this travel size, and I went ahead and purchased the, like, the biggest size that I could find because this fragrance has just been really blowing my mind. What I get right off the bat with this fragrance on my skin is this really juicy, cotton candy grape flavor and I have talked about this before and luckily you guys some of you at least have tried cotton candy grapes you know what they are and this to me just immediately it hits me with that scent and for me it feels different than straight cotton candy there's this kind of there's just this kind of juicy note um to the cotton candy smell that I have just been really really kind of obsessing over honestly definitely get whipped cream um a little bit of marshmallow as well when this finally settles down onto my skin probably like a half an hour to an hour later i do start to get those nutty notes that this boasts you know it is saying it's pistachio gelato but it doesn't come right off the bat for me. Again, I bought the <laughs> mega size. It is coming my way. I have just been really, really, really enjoying this. And by the way, I wore this um, to my friend's bridal shower and multiple people were telling me that I smelt really good. And I was not the only one that really enjoyed the scent. Next up, we have a lip product from Dior. This was kind of an out of the blue purchase from me. It's the Dior Lip Maximizer, but specifically I got the shade Mahogany and I am wearing it on my lips today. It doesn't necessarily go with like the my outfit or anything or even necessarily the makeup but here we are I just I cannot get enough of it the Dior lip maximizer is just a very soft subtle lip plumper the gloss formula is not sticky it has this beautiful translucence to it and I think what you get out of Dior lip products is a formula that feels nourishing on the lips, doesn't feel sticky or heavy. Really delicious, sweet mint smell that only Dior has. You know, I've smelt a lot of sweeter mint smells and they have a very specific one in here to, you know, make them stand out. And I have just noticed that I really, really enjoy it. It's a very, very subtle plump effect on the lips, by the way. And I think finding that perfect shade for you that you can't necessarily find in other lip plumpers is where this shines. You know, they're very classic, like clear, I don't necessarily think is worth the money, but this mahogany shade, this kind of cool berry brown just does something for me. I, I love a cool berry brown and this has just been really making me happy recently. I also have two blushes that I wanted to talk about today. These are actually both powder blushes. No cream blushes, though I did want to mention one, but I still want to test it out a little bit more before I give it my stamp of approval. But let's first start off with Buxom. This is the Wanderlust blush in the shade Seashells specifically. I have talked about uh, Dolly and I absolutely love the shade Dolly. 
but seashells is just such a beautiful warm peachy shade that I think a lot of you will enjoy for the summer. This actually has a little bit more uh, luminosity than the shade Dolly does. For me it almost feels like it's going towards the blush topper realm but it's not quite there yet. You know, I don't think I would like this if there was a lot of like straight sparkle, you know, that's not what I like. But if you really want that pretty luminous effect, I have found this really gives me a pretty luminosity. The shade is exceptional. It's very neutral as well. So for me, it becomes that blush that's like so easy to just like immediately go to when I want that really pretty, fresh, neutral look. I do find that it kind of like accentuates the cheekbones a little bit in a way that I find to be super flattering. So this is definitely a blush that I have been enjoying. And it's also a plus that it lasts really well on the skin. You know, it's going to last, it definitely lasts longer than some of the other blushes in my collection. So that to me is a big plus. The second blush is the Ambient Lighting Blush in Mood Exposure. So I picked this up during the Sephora Savings event and I have just been enjoying it so much. I did my friend's makeup for her bridal shower. I used this on her cheeks and it looked, it just offers this beautiful kind of refined look to the skin. I actually applied it over top of, like I'm wearing a combo of both the blushes I just talked about on my cheeks today. But I found that this even kind of refined and blurred out the side with the buxom on it when I did that. For me, it definitely feels like bridal wedding makeup. It just has this beautifying, light reflecting effect that also makes the skin look very soft and perfected. It's just beautiful. I mean, this is what Hourglass is known for, right? This isn't a new formula, but it's one that I hadn't used in so long and I'm really glad that I have it back in my rotation just because I think I could add like a really dewy foundation all over, which is what I did today. Um, I'll talk about this favorite in a second. But I added that all over and then this just kind of very softly takes down the shine but adds this different level of polished luminosity that I just, I really, really enjoy. This is a good one. And they also do, um, I'll leave a link below, but they also have minis so you don't necessarily need to buy the full size. I wish I knew because I would have bought the mini rather than the full size, I think. Next, the eyeshadow. The eyeshadow on my eyes today. It is from Colfi. It is the Zari Eyes Eyeshadow in Bronze Brocade. It is this really wet textured cream eyeshadow. It's interesting to me. I think it kind of reminds me of the Jelly Much eyeshadows from ColourPop, but it's just a completely polished, amplified uh, version of them, I think. This shade is just... It's so beautiful. It's a very beautiful warm bronze, but for me, it doesn't lean overly bronze. It's not very on the nose. It feels like there's kind of this multi-dimensional shift to it because there are these really pretty soft glitters throughout. Again, on the finger, it feels quite wet and I definitely do recommend applying these onto the eyes with a finger first and then blending out. Um, I think you get like the most impact that way but they go on quite wet feeling and then they dry down. They definitely give you enough time to work with them, which again is so important to me, but they set down so they last a little bit longer than a more moussey uh, cream eyeshadow. I think if you're a fan of like these very classic cream eyeshadows, like the, like the Tom Ford cream color for eyes, you like the Charlotte Tilbury eyes to mesmerize, you just want something with a little extra sparkle to it, I think this could potentially be a really good option for you. I only wish that there were more shades to choose from and I do think they were going for a little bit more of a colorful color story. You know, there's this bronze shade that's more neutral. There's a pink shade as well that leans more neutral, but the other shades are a little bit more fun, which is good. I mean, because they're fun, that's what they're going for. But I do wish there were some other more neutral shades to choose from just for, you know, the boring people like me. But overall, long wearing, reflective and very pretty on the eyes, multi-dimensional. Just one to be on the lookout for, for sure. Next, I did a whole video on this, but I wanted to reconnect and talk about the Say 
glowy super skin foundation. This essentially for me has become the everyday foundation choice because it's so easy to apply. I think if you are a fan of the MAC face and body, this to me is like a more, a slightly more perfecting version of that foundation. It's a, it's a little bit less glowy in my opinion, but you can really build it up on the skin. It sits very closely on the skin. Working it in with fingers, I think is a really good way to use this product. And I just find I can put it out in my fingers, apply it all over the skin very quickly. And I just get such a smooth, softened look to my skin that is also slightly glowy and dewy. This is not your everyday glowy, glowy, heavy, creamy, tinted moisturizer. No, this to me is that kind of face and body texture that for me, I personally really enjoy. Again, I really love when makeup sits closely on my skin, so there's not necessarily a differentiation between the texture of my skin and the product on top. And this does a really beautiful job of it. I really, really enjoy it. I can, I always look forward to applying it, which for me means it's a home run. Speaking of hollow under eyes, I wanted to give a quick shout out to this concealer, even though I know I've mentioned it um, a few times on my channel. No, it's not the Kosas. It is the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I've been getting questions about other concealers that I recommend that aren't the Kosas. The Say Hydro Beam Concealer is another absolute favorite, and I find that that's just a slighter, lighter coverage version of the Kosas. Maybe a touch thinner under the eyes as well, but, but I absolutely love that one. But I also wanted to recommend this one from Armani, specifically for those of you that kind of want to use a concealer all over the face. This offers this beautiful blur um, that the Armani like Luminous Silk line is known for. By the way, I do have one of the Armani Luminous Silk blushes on the way to me. I did purchase one to try out. So, you know, be on the lookout for a review of that. But I am wearing this one under my eyes today and I just, it's so thin on the skin. There's this beautiful, luxurious texture to it. You know, with some thinner concealers under the eyes, they can kind of dry up really fast. You know, these serum concealers that eventually kind of set down. This hydrates the under eye. It offers a blur, but also a kind of luminosity, especially when I use it like, over here where I have more pores, I've just noticed in the past, especially if I'm using it all over as like a foundation kind of item, it just blurs and makes the skin look so healthy. It's kind of that makeup that looks really good like macro up close. You're like, damn, it really just melts into the skin in such a gorgeous way. So I just wanted to give another shout out to this one because I definitely think it's warranted. And lastly, the Pat McGrath divine bronzer. I have the shade, what shade is this? Naked Desire. Now this shade I think is really pretty. I have it on my um, cheeks today. I do wish it leaned a touch more pink. Um, it definitely leans more yellow, but, but everything else about it I think is just really pretty. It's pretty densely pressed in the pan, which basically means it, it makes her a very buildable formula. You can really layer and layer this on without it looking super heavy. There are a lot of bronzers out there, especially powder bronzers, where I think it's pressed in a way that just ends up giving you this really thick powdery look that especially if you have hair on your face like I do, I mean, I think most of us do, I can just like see it sitting on the hair and I'm like, oh, it just ends up looking kind of choppy. This does not look choppy. It looks really pretty. And I find that I almost use this to kind of set my face. You know, if I want like a very subtle overall bronzed look, I'll kind of take it all the way up here. I, I'll take the residual over the nose. And again, because it's such a pretty formula, buildable, not luminous, but not too matte and flat, it just ends up looking really nice on the skin. So I've been really enjoying this one as well. That's all of my favorites um, that I've been liking. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, I will leave my use to the people discount code uh, down below for you all if you wanted to check out the eye concentrate, the, the kombucha power exfoliant. And I'll leave everything that I talked about uh, today down below for you guys as well. But thank you again so much for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next one.